Next step is to install the pistons. Uh, so we have to set up things for that. Um, I've gone through on all the cylinders and cleaned them again with the bed sheets, lint-free towels, in other words, and a um, and with the brake clean. So the cylinders are all nice and clean. I've got my pistons laid out here, numbering everything by cylinder. Uh, it's the best way to keep track of it. How the engines are set up is you have one, three, five, seven on this side, and then two, four. Uh, six and eight on that side. I've marked them here with a marker just so I can keep track of them. I've done the same thing on the oil pan rails for when we uh, have to flip it over and put the, the rods on. So these are the pistons that I cleaned up earlier. Here's the ring set. Um, you have a top compression ring, a lower compression ring I guess I'll call it, and then the oil ring set. But the first thing to do is to check the end gap in the rings uh, to make sure that they're okay. According to the rings, these are Molly rings, uh, right there. Um, it should be 12 thousandths of an inch should be the end gap. So what you got to do is get the ring down in the cylinder. Just going to squeeze it in here like this. Glove stuck. Okay, and you have to get it square down in the cylinder. The easiest way is to take the piston and push it down with the piston. Push it down until it's maybe two inches or so from the bottom. And use a feeler gauge like this. This is a 12 thousandths thick uh, feeler gauge. Go in there on the gap, make sure that fits in there, and it passes through just fine. Get a little more of a close up here so you can see a little better. So this is my 12 thousandths feeler gauge, and fits through there just fine. So you'll want to do that to the compression ring, and I don't know if you have to do it for the oil control rings, but I'm going to do it anyways. It doesn't take much time. So I have the piston very loosely put into a vise here, just to kind of hold it steady while I put the rings on. You also have to index the gaps of the rings, because each ring's got a gap. Um, so this would be the gap of the top ring, second ring, so two compression rings, and then for the oil control ring. Um, the, the actual control ring itself will be here and then the gaps of the two outer, um, so I call them support rings I guess. We'll go so the first ring you put on is the oil ring, it's the lowest one. Uh, start with the center piece um, and I'm going to line up the gap with this mark here. Um, again these go on, the oil ring's pretty forgiving. Um, just kind of snaps right in place. Then put on the support rings. Again, I want the gap to line up here with this one, and then the gap for the other one to line up there. So these fit on the top and bottom of those of the um, of that center ring. That one's on. And then again, I'm just going to get them close. Uh, you'll have to index them once you go to and make sure they're in the right spot when you uh, go to put them in the, in the engine. Okay, make sure that it's nice and free. Okay, then the next ring, and you can't mess it up on these, They're, the rings are a little bit different, a um, little bit different thickness. Um, so it, uh, you really could mess up the number one and number two uh, compression ring. But this is number two compression ring. All rings will have some sort of a signifier on it, what's top or bottom. On this set of rings, there's a little dot. I don't know if you can see it. It's right there. So that means top. So this is the second ring. So I want to line up the gap here. And again, not so much of a, of a big deal. Because um, uh, uh, we, we can get them rotated the right orientation. This goes here. And just spread the ring out enough to where you can get it on over the piston. Get into that second groove. Uh, actually, I want to go far down. There we go. Okay. Gap is lined up with the two. Then the same thing. 
with uh, the number one ring. There's a little dot on it right there. See it? It's right there. Um, there's a ring spreading tool. You want to line it up. far down on the back side. There we go. So that's a whole set of rings. All the rings are on. They're pretty much indexed. I'm ready to put these things into the block. So we're ready to put the pistons in. Um, be very methodical about this. I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Flipping the motor back and forth while I do it. Uh, first step is to uh, lightly oil the inside of the cylinder. So uh, again, I have one of my lint-free rags, better known as an old bed sheet. I'm gonna oil inside of that cylinder. So I have my number one piston here. I have indexed to make sure that the rings are in the right position. Um, took the cap off, put some tape on the end of the rod here. Um, to protect the crank uh, when we go to put it in. One thing I didn't mention was that the crank journal for that cylinder uh, one is all the way top or bottom dead center. So oil this thing up. I've kind of set it in this pan here to try to keep keep it a mess, a little contained. This is the ring compressor. I'm going to oil up the inside of that. Spread around. Okay. So I'm gonna put the ring compressor on. It's a top and a bottom to the ring compressor. There's little tabs that will keep it from um, uh, from going down into the cylinder when we push the piston in. Put it in so there's a good amount of the skirt left out, and that this band that goes around here is kind of right in the middle of the rings. Tighten it down. So you want it tight, but the piston still has to slide out of this thing. Uh, I'm kind of crooked here. So let's get it straightened out. There we go. I'm going to oil down the skirt. So we're working on the number one cylinder. I'm going to double check. Um, number one piston. This dot goes to the front of the motor. So this guy goes in essentially in this orientation. So I'm going to put it down here. The skirt started. Okay, I'm going to go down underneath, double check that my journal is bottom dead center as far away as possible because you don't want to hit the uh, hit the piston, or hit the, uh, the crank journal with the, with the rod end. So we're going to go nice and slow. I'm going to tighten this thing up just a little bit more, I think. I'm taking the uh, handle of a hammer and uh, pounding this thing down. I'm going to put my hand down here just to guide that rod uh, so it doesn't hit the crank journal. There we go. That's the, uh, that's the last piston going in. I've wiped the bearing journal one last time with some brake clean and a lint-free towel. The rod is right here. I'm going to put some assembly lube on the, on the rod. And I'm going to pull that rod right up to the journal being careful not to uh, not to damage it or hit it put some assembly lube on that I'm 
and put the cap on. Make sure you put it on the right way. They only go on one way. See the stripe here and the line there? That's the way they go. Take the rod bolt. Don't go anywhere. So all the rods are in and just uh, snug a little bit. And uh, the torque sequence for these bolts are 15 foot-pounds torque and then 75 degrees rotation. Uh, one other thing I want to show you is this contraption I got on the front of the motor here. Um, I made this contraption here uh, and what this is, and you can see that I can turn over the engine real easy with it. And uh, let me take this off, I'll show you. Uh, that is a gear out of an old oil pump. I just welded it to this here uh, piece of steel and basically it slips on um, and it's keyed to go where the oil pump does and that's my homemade uh, engine turner. So 15 foot-pounds. It's not much. So they're all torqued down to 15 foot-pounds. Now I need to rotate them 75 degrees. So I've got that degree um, wheel thing out again. So we're at zero right now. Let me hold this steady and start turning. There's 70. I think so. so the bottom end is pretty much finished. Uh, went fairly well. Uh, a couple things I want to mention about um, the assembly um, on this thing. Um, I did not uh, plastic gauge and check clearances and stuff on the rod bearings and the mains. Um, I didn't have the rods reconditioned, didn't have the crank polished, same bearings went back in, I didn't feel the need to do that. If you're putting new stuff in, you do have to plastic gauge just to make sure that uh, the tolerances are, are correct. You know, for the rings, I did measure those because those were new pieces that were going in, so that was important to measure those. Um, also on the rod bolts, I bought new rod bolts, uh, but they're the stock GM rod bolts. I uh, read a lot about using ARP rod bolts, that they are stronger, um, that the GM rod bolts are one of the weak links. Um, you know, if I was building some crazy 600 horsepower motor, it'd be a different situation, but um, the ARPs have a different, a different torque rating on them. And uh, everything I read is that if you were to use those, you need to have the rods basically reboard. So I went with the stock, with the stock rod bolts. Um, again, use that book. Um, again, this book is really, really good. Um, you know, because I didn't go into all the detail on what um, all the steps and such on the video, um, but that book, and then also uh, go out into YouTube. Uh, there's a uh, channel called carburetorsuck.com, and it's a guy that is fantastic videos on assembling and disassembling LS motors. Um, he's probably got 20, I don't know, 15 to 20 videos out there. Really good, really good. I would recommend that you go out and, uh, and look at those also. Um, the other thing is just remember to keep everything super clean, keep track of everything, label everything the best that you can. Um, I'm going to put a plastic bag on this thing and keep it nice and clean. And next thing I'm going to probably concentrate on is the heads. So stay tuned.